I'm Brad DeRoche. Welcome to my series on guitar fundamentals. This is lesson number 24. In this lesson, we're going to focus on trills. We're going to look at a couple of different ways to play these, both on the string and cross string. And these can be used in a wide variety of applications and in a lot of different styles of music, ranging from Baroque to classical and even modern music. So there are just a few different technical ways to play trills on the instrument. So let's get started with the most basic one and work our way through to the more complex ones. All right, to start with, most people have played trills before. And if you're like me, when you first started out, when you do play a trill, it's typically played, both notes are played on the same string. So let's first define what a trill is. A trill is an ornament that decorates a note that's written in the score. So the note that's written in the score, we'll call that the main note. All right, and then the other note is the ornament or the decorative note. So if we have the note D, for example, written in the score, I'll take this one here on the second string, the note D is the main note. When we do an ornament or a, a trill in the Baroque era, for instance, we typically start on the higher note, which would be the next note in the scale. And then we trill downward to the main note. When we end the trill, we always want to end on the main note. So we want to terminate on the main note the note that's written in the score. All right, there's always exceptions to all of these rules, so don't take any of them as like a hard and fast rule that can never be violated. But for the most part, these are the, the, the general trends or the standards that most people use. So if I were to do a trill on the note D and I were to play it on the same string, I would go, I would start with a higher note, which in this scale would be E. Let's say I'm in the key of C major, for instance. I guess I didn't define that. So if I were to play a D and do a trill on it, it would be E down to D. So what I do is I pluck the first note here with the, with the right hand, and then I do a pull off, hammer on, and pull off again. So I have a total of four notes, E, D, E, D. And again, only the first note is plucked. The rest are, are gotten through slurs. It's a perfectly good way to play trills. The sound, you want, what you want to look for there uh, is a good even sound. So the plucked note, the pull off and the hammer ons all have to sound about the same. So you have to work to make sure that they are even. Another problem for me that, that pops up when I'm doing trills a lot of times is I tend to squeeze my hand and create a lot of tension. I see that in other players as well. So make sure when you're doing these that you try to keep your hand relaxed. In particular, this big muscle in the thumb here. So that would be a good way to practice those is just making sure your hand is very relaxed and doing a few of these. Now, third finger is probably the most common, three to one, but you could also practice two to one and four to one. Now, four to two, yeah, you might have to do those sometimes, but I try not to as much as possible. I try to keep my first finger as the, the lowest note, the main note, um, whenever possible. Now, again, there's always some circumstance that involves uh, having to trill down to another finger. So those would be worth working on a bit too. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. Let's say you wanted to add more notes to that. You could just simply add another uh, pair of notes here to turn it into a six note trill or eight or however many. Once again, I'm starting on the higher note, terminating on the main note. Now, when you do a bunch of notes like that, it brings up the next thing that I want to talk about, a finger exchange trill. So this is the second thing we're going to look at. If you're going to do a, more than, say, four notes in your trill, uh, it might be worth your time to try practicing a finger exchange. What I mean by that is to, you're going to be playing the same higher note, but with different fingers in alternation. So in this case, I'm using fingers three and two in alternation, but they're playing the same note. Okay, so they're both playing the note E in this case. Now at first it might seem difficult and, and you might wonder why you even bother to do it. But if you keep your hand relaxed and you practice it for a little while, you get to the point where you can do that one faster, I would say in most cases, than you can using the same finger over and over and over. So, so that can be a, a really great type of trill to add to your arsenal of guitar technique. Notice how fast that one sounds. It's faster than I can do 
sounds a little better than that one. This one gets a little, I don't know, clunky sounding. This one keeps my hand more relaxed too than the finger exchange style. So anyway, that's a good one to practice. So that gives you a second way to try trills. Then let's take a look at another way that you can do this. Now this isn't so common for the Baroque era in terms of performance practice, but um, it, it comes more from a keyboard style of ornaments. So one of the things that you can do is to play the two notes, E and D, in this case, but play them on different strings. So what I could do is start out by playing the first string open E, and then the D on the second string. So they're on cross strings, so we call them a cross string trill. E, first string open, D, second string, third fret. E, D, E, D, all right? Now in the right hand, I'm doing middle and index in alternation, M, I, M, I in this case. do these uh, they sound different than the uh, on the string trills because both notes are actually sounding at the same time if you play the notes on the same string in these this style here you can only get one note at a time obviously you're not going to get two different sounding notes on the same string right so this cross string style gives a very different sound and it's probably closer to a keyboard trill where they would be playing on uh, adjacent keys for instance so you're actually hearing both notes ringing together, which provides a really nice dissonance and uh, uh, gives a lot of energy to the sound. And so that's a really good one to practice, this cross string style ornaments. And if you simply want to have six notes instead of four, you can just add another MI alternation or eight notes, for instance. Okay, so MI is a really good way to do cross string trills. But then there's another way that, another fingering that I use. Uh, so this is the fourth one. So the third one was the MI cross string trill. The fourth type is to use this fingering that I learned back in the 1990s from David Russell. And it, it uses non adjacent pairs of fingers AI, then MP, AIMP. So it starts out here. We're going to do the note E on the first string open. D on the second string, just like the MI cross string example, but the fingering in the right hand is different. So it's, it starts out with ring, ring finger, then index, A, I, A, I, that's the first two notes, A, I, then the next two notes are middle and thumb, M, P, M, P, M, P. So A, I, M, P, A, I, M, P. It's a four note trill, first start this it'll be very awkward so I encourage you to go slow and just iron out the fingering so that you know exactly which finger comes next it's tricky uh, when I first started doing these uh, I felt like <laughs> like I was so uncoordinated I just couldn't move my hand and I remember hearing David do these and it was just extraordinary and you can hear it if you listen to his recordings or watch some videos or whatever you'll uh, and a Baroque era piece in particular you'll hear them and they're super fast and they sound really great Also add more notes to it so um, one way would, if you want to do eight notes let me start with that one you just simply double this so I'm going to do it two times in a row A I M P A I M P once again it just depends on how much time you have in the music to play the trill you may not have enough time to do eight notes if you do six notes, I actually start with MP to the last two notes, or last two fingers of the, the pattern, and then I start over on AIMP. I tend not to do that one too often. It's, it's not as comfortable for me. But anyway, you could add that one as well. All right, so we have, that was our fourth type. It was a cross string trill using AIMP fingering. Now there's something else that we can do. Here's a, another thing to add to these fingerings. We'll, we'll call this our fifth type of ornament. And that's to add a bass note, which you often have in, in music, along with the upper note, the main note. So in this case, let's say I have the note B in the bass. 
along with this note D in the treble, and I want to do an ornament just on the treble note. How would I do that? Well, I use the thumb to play the B, because the upper note starts with the A, A, I, M, B. So I'm able to play a bass note and start my trill at the same time. to get that idea. So thumb plus ring at the same time to start the trill. All right, so those are, are very common ornaments that you'll run into a lot. Now there's one last type I would like to show you and these are three note trills, much more common in the classical era. Now with these ones, they actually start on the main note, the note that's written in the score. So if I were to do use my same example, D is the main note written, the next note that would come after it would be the note higher in the scale the note E, and then back down to the main note, D. So as with the Baroque ornaments, you want to terminate on the note that's written in the score, the main note. So these are, on the string would be D, E, D. It's just a simple combination slur. All right, so those ones could be practiced a little bit. It's just doing a one, three, one slur if you get the, uh, slurs from the previous lesson, the combination of slurs. Um, then you can also do these as cross string ornaments. Now, I hadn't heard anybody do this um, until recently. I actually, I actually started doing this in some Albana's music that I was working on because I didn't like the sound of the ornaments that I was getting on the string. I just didn't feel like they were biting enough and, um, and fast enough. Uh, they just, they sounded too weak. And so I was really looking for a, a different way to do these. So I was experimenting with some different styles. So what I came up with was this type of cross string trill for three note groups, which starts on the main note, in this case, the note D. I use index, then middle, and terminate with thumb. So it's I, M, P, second string, first string, second string. again I added a bass note but you don't so once again I found this really helpful in certain types of music and the particular example where I found it most useful was in the music of Albanus but it could be found in other composers music too it's just a really quick compact and uh, uh, I don't know snappy sounding trill that um, I hadn't really done before uh, recent years and so I was again working on some Albanian music and I found that I needed something that, that fit that style of music a little better so that's what I came up with. Um, you could try other fingerings. It could be A, I, M, or uh, excuse me, I, A, P, something like that. Um, experiment with it. Find your own. There might be other fingerings that work a little better for you. What we're trying to do is to make it sound fairly rapid, fairly even, uh, in terms of the meter and even in terms of sound quality. And I also think it has to have a certain amount of power so that it, it cuts through uh, in the score and it's not just some kind of fluttering sound in the background. You could do those too, but um, those types of ornaments aren't quite as effective for me. I, I like them to, to kind of stand out when you're gonna do an ornament, might as well make it sound better. All right, hope this helps you some. Uh, these are good things to practice just on a daily basis, use them as part of a warm up, perhaps. Anyway, I uh, hope to see you again in the next lesson and practice well. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.